Good evening. It's 6.30, time for us to get started this evening. So glad that you could be a part of our time together this uh, tonight. And uh, we do pray that you've had a wonderful day today. We're going to give a moment or so to allow some of our people to join in with us, kind of get settled in, get started tonight. And God bless you. Good evening, Sister Patsy. Glad that you could be a part of the service this evening. Hey, Brother Bobby, Sister Francis, and the Hudson family, Danny and Christy, God bless y'all for being with us this evening. Hope all of you have had a great week this week, uh, trying to stay in out of the heat some, but I you know, pray that it's been good for you and God's been blessing you. Hey, Sister Joyce Mitchell and uh, uh, Jessica, God bless y'all. And uh, hey, Brother Gary, and y'all are welcome again to interact, just uh that's a, that's a good thing to do. I see some of you have already got that started, and I appreciate that. And uh, this is just a, a, a good opportunity for you to communicate a little bit back and forth, say, give, give greetings back and forth to one another. Thumbs up on the shirt, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just pulled this down out of the closet. I hadn't worn it in a long while. I'd almost forgotten I had this shirt. It's an old Columbia shirt. And uh, so thank you for the compliment. Hey, Sister Doris. Glad you could be with us this evening as well. Well, as we kind of just uh, delay just a little bit, I just catch up on a couple of things, just just chit chat more or less, just talk. And uh, today's been kind of one of those days. Well, we this week has been kind of one of those weeks, kind of a hectic sort of week. But anyhow, had a little uh, uh, got in just a little bit, you know, later than usual from the post office today, and getting in, trying to get everything settled down and worked out. And we we've, we've had a little problem with the. Uh, little drainage tube that leads out of the house for the air conditioner and it had gotten stopped up and I thought I'd had it cured but I found out a little earlier uh, that uh, we got a little water situation that we're working with and uh, anyhow uh, looked in there and uh, it had stopped up again so I had to frantically try to get around there and get it unstopped and get it going again. I think we've got that. I'll check on it when we get through this evening. But anyhow, that's kind of been what the day has been like. It's one of those running days. I know you all have some of those along the way, don't you? But uh, anyhow, God's good all the time, and we thank him for blessing us and keeping us just like he does. And if Gary, Gary is on here, that means y'all have finished up out there with the uh, the food distribution today. I saw some of those parked out there, and uh, in anyhow, giving out the food today. Uh, we have a hundred boxes of food that we give out every Wednesday, and we're so thankful that we have that uh, privilege to bless our community like this. And so, if you'd like to be a part of that, we just encourage you to to join in. It's nothing like the uh, the, the you know the uh, 
warm heart that you get from trying to reach out to other people. I, and that is a blessing to get people coming by in need. Some in more need than others. But we're glad to be able to bless them. And we're very thankful for the workers that show up so faithfully to get the job done. I would imagine they get here somewhere between 1 and 2 o'clock. You know, somewhere along there to get started, get everything going, get it lined up. And uh, I know that's a little bit early, but we usually get about 250 boxes. And then we ship 150 up in the uh, upper Laurel Hill and for them to distribute up there. Hey, Sister uh, Becky, glad that you could be with us this evening. And I see some people already recognize you on the screen and they're welcoming you to be with us. So God bless you all for joining in tonight. And again, we pray that your week has been blessed and that you've experienced the presence of God. Uh, pray that you've uh, God spoke to you this week through his word, through your times of prayer, that God's encouraged you, that he's lifted you up, he's helped you, and he's keeping us all safe uh, from all harm. As you kind of get you know, now, we're kind of up and going a little bit and getting a few more folks joining in. We'll go ahead and get started this evening and uh, just share some things with you. First thing we're going to do is go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to be with us. We do have quite a list tonight of people that need prayer, and uh, if you have a need, you want to uh, you want to uh, to to uh, for us to, to help you to pray about, you can uh, put it on the screen right now, comment, and uh, then too, you can. Uh, take and uh, send us a text with that need as well. But as we're praying, let me just kind of run down the list here as we uh, as we look to God for these who stand in need tonight. Let's let's remember Natalie McCarver and let's just touch the Lord. Believe, believe God just to touch her body and uh, help her. But she's going for some physical test and uh, and we'll should be awaiting those results. So let's pray for God to touch her. Susan Cuthrell, uh that's Joyce Moran's sister. Let's lift her up in prayer along with the Morans. Let's pray for them. Uh, Brother Bobby and Francis Adams, let's ask God to touch them. Uh, my sister and her husband, Chuck, uh, and Jennifer Mooney, uh, they need a touch in their body. Both of them have been battling. Uh, Chuck, I know, the, the COVID virus, and Jennifer was uh, symptoms, you know, you know, something similar to what Chuck has got. So let's pray for both of them. And uh, Sister Patsy sent a request a little earlier for us to pray for Jennifer Derrick. That's her daughter. She's going to be going for another evaluation. Uh, a number of years ago, Jennifer was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, cancer was on the brain, and God has just moved in her life mildly. A little hiccup here not too long ago, which brought some questions as to what was taking place and going on. And uh, things seemed to look okay at that time, but they were doing a follow-up evaluation. So let's pray and ask God to touch. I noticed Becky put up there, James Gilmore needs prayer, so let's be praying for him. Uh, let's see here, Jerry Lovett, our friend who's uh, uh, going through the... Uh, the chemo treatments, uh, my cousin Wayne and Marie, both of them were out of the hospital and making steady progress. My uncle Michael Johnson continues to need our prayer. And uh, let's see here, Jerry Brown. Let's lift her up in prayer. And uh, she has some health issues. We're trusting God to minister and to help her over. And uh, Lauren and Carrie Beach, uh, you know, we just, uh, just got growing to love these folks that are a blessing to our church family, uh, even though we haven't been able to... Uh, uh, have much time to, to, to be together simply because of the virus that's you know, has cropped up and hindered so many things, but uh, they need our prayers this season. Let's pray for them and ask God to touch them and some of the members of their family. And, uh, of course, our nation, we need to be praying for God to move across the United States of America. We have a very important election that is coming up, and we're praying for God to work his will out. And as well, the, the, the COVID-19 virus that uh, just runs rampant across our country. Let's pray and ask God to help there. Myself and Susan, uh, we both need your prayers, and we're depending on you to, to pray and lift us up and lift us up to the Lord. And uh, as we just lift each other up, and I saw, see Danielle uh, Gortz on here with us this evening. God bless you for being a part of our time. And like I said, that's a number of needs. I hope maybe you wrote a couple down, or maybe one or so just you know got lodged into your mind for you to, to focus on and pray about. So let's right now just approach the throne of grace. We know that we know that uh, our prayers are heard by God; they are answered, and we're so thankful that the Lord uh, answers our prayer. And if God's answered a prayer for you this week, just type out "Amen" on your screen, and I'm going to start praying. Okay, Heavenly Father, we just open up our heart to you, 
And we continue on, Lord, in our time of prayer today, God. Prayer has just been on our heart throughout this day as we've lifted up your name. We praise you, worship you, magnify you. And that's what we're doing right now is just lifting up the wonderful name of Jesus above every other name. Uh, and as, as we lift you up and give you thanks for being so mighty, being so great, just, just this time of worship, God, and standing in awe of you, uh, we are so thankful for you, God, and thank you that we're part of your, your family, uh, the blood-bought church, and we thank you for all the benefits that go along with serving, serving you, God. It's just a pleasure, and we thank you for every moment, God. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us strength to walk. Uh, walk each day, Lord, in the Spirit, Lord. Uh, not, not to say it's not a struggle, God, because it is, but you help us each day, Lord. In those days we fall and we fail, you're there to pick us up and help us to keep going. But tonight as we come before you, Lord, there are many who are sick in their body, and I pray that you touch each one. Lord, we've called out their names before our audience, and we're calling those names, and, we, and, and Lord, and you as well. So God, I pray in Jesus' name for healing to take place. Those that are trying to overcome, Lord, a surgery involving cancer and uh, going through chemo treatments, we ask you, God, that those chemo treatments, Lord, would do what they are supposed to do, and Lord, healing would come into the, these individuals' lives. Lord, those battling uh, heart issues, God, you know what they are, Lord, I pray for rhythm problems to be solved. I pray, God, for Lord, for uh, the different ailments that go along with the heart, the blood pressure, Lord, the uh, uh, and the, uh, and, and, and the different diseases that can take place there in our arteries. So we pray, God, that you would move there. And we just, Lord, those who are battling COVID-19 in, uh, in their life right now, we just pray that you would encourage them, calm their fears, know that you've got everything under control, and you're going to help them work through that. And we just pray, Lord, that your spirit would move upon us tonight, strengthening us and equipping us and helping us to do what you've called us to do. Bless each one. May, may our time together be inspiring. May it be encouraging. May it be uplifting, God. Uh, may it be a blessing to all of our lives. And so we give you a great big thank you. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you for just praying with us this evening. And uh, just uh, as we m march kind of along right now, uh, something that I wanted to share with you, and I'll be elaborating more on it Sunday. Uh, August is usually a time, uh, where January and August are usually times when we go to the Lord in fasting and prayer. And so this coming Monday, we want to we want to encourage you to join with us in this time. You know, uh, I know that we are uh, uh, separated right now because of the virus and all that's going on with that. But that does not stop us as a group from fasting and praying. And so I want to encourage you, beginning Monday, go with, go with us for 21 days of fasting and prayer. And, uh, you know, I, during that time, I pray that you'll focus really sincerely on, uh, on, your, on, all, on your relationship with God as I will on my relationship with God. And so it's important that we, that we dig in and that we spend time with God each day. Set aside a time to do that. That's going to be an important thing for you to do if you're going to be su successful at it. It's a set of time that you do it and a place where, it's, where it goes on at. If you can set a time and you can secure a place, you're more apt to be able to follow through with this. So I'm going to encourage you for 21 days, enter in time of, a time of, pr of prayer and fasting. I uh, encourage you again to go back to the, the Version Bible or if you've got a, uh, uh, another source for a devotion to come up, you know, there are different subjects, different topics that you can go there. There are topics on fasting and prayer. There's topics on marriage. There's topics on raising kids. There are topics on trials and temptations. There's just a various uh, on fear. There's just so many things right there that you can focus in on that you can that can help you. A lot of those devotions go from three days to seven days, some a year. And so, uh, you know, just pick out one that will work for you, and we encourage you, encourage you to do that. Now, I may just even shoot you on through the text messages and just ask you to participate in that. Just don't know yet, but uh, we'll see how that all works out. So, again, we're talking about beginning this coming Monday, 21 days of fasting and prayer. And when I say fasting, you know, you, you know, uh, if you can, you know, uh, do, do some fasting, intermittent fasting during that time. It may be one meal a day or it may be a, a, a whole day here and there, but you may set aside a day like Tuesday that you fast and uh, leave that up to you. It's just important that we just get, you know, that we, uh, 
recognize the importance of spending time with God and, and fasting. What does fasting do? It helps us to gain some control of this flesh by the help and the grace of God. So I'm saying that to you. So I, and I do want to encourage you, pray as a family each day. Set a time to do that. Uh, sometimes that's hard in our chaotic schedule. Uh, so again, another challenge that I want to throw out there for you is to listen predominantly to Christian music. I'm not telling you just exactly what to listen to or what station to listen to, but listen predominantly to Christian music. Sometimes it's just easy to let other types of th other types of music, you know, be our main diet that comes into us. But I want to encourage you to, you know, wean back some of that and go more toward the Christian music side. And uh, let's see, and I do want to uh, encourage you to, uh, again, show up at these times, you know, when, we, when we're having service. If you can't be in the uh, on-site service here at the, at the church here on the grounds, uh, you know, we understand that. And so, but, you know, you can tune in, uh, be with us through the, the YouTube on Sundays, and you can be with us just like we are right now. And I encourage you, maybe, uh, maybe if you will, to, to reach out to some other people that are around you and, uh, you know, encourage them to be a part of our Wednesday night service as well. I think right now, if this is right, we've got about 13 people viewing with us, which, which, which we're so thankful for. So, again, just saying those things to kind of give us some uh, guidelines to go by when it comes to fasting and prayer. And uh, if you've got some dietary restrictions where you can't, maybe you're a diabetic and, uh, you know, it's not good for you to skip meals, there's some other things that you can set aside time time with and uh, and focus on God and allow the Lord to work in your heart and work in your life. Uh, it's not uh, not necessarily a convenient thing, but it will help us. And I pray that this springboards something great in our lives. So again, beginning this coming Monday, 21 days of fasting and prayer as we trust the Lord uh, to work in our hearts and work in our lives. Again, on YouTube on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, then in Facebook 6.30 on Wednesday night. So important for us to come together like this, even if it is like this. I thank God that we do have this medium still yet to be able to come together and, and to spend this time encouraging one another and just watching you watching you kind of go back and forth with your amens and your, uh, you know, saying the different things that you're saying to encourage one another. That's a blessing. And uh, I'll take a pause break right here. I'm glad to have my Aunt Darlene with us tonight. And uh, we're praying for Uncle Michael, trusting God to touch him and meet the need that's in his life. And I do pray that he's gaining some help and some strength right there. If you're going to look with us in the Word of God, let's just go ahead and dive into the Word this evening, if you will. It's just, uh, just, just the Word is just so so wonderful. It's so powerful. I pray that uh, that you have a love for God's Word. I uh, I remember early on in my Christian life, and you know I've never been one. I have to I hate to admit this coming through school who enjoyed reading. I, I think there was a one book that I, I did like to read as we were going through a, our different classes, and I was in high school already. And uh, I think uh, I said, well, I called high school. I think it was you know middle school somewhere along there. And we had this reading class, and it was one of the elective classes, and so we didn't have a lot of options in J. So uh, you know I was just, I, I took that one on, and uh, anyhow it was a reading class, and so it was always difficult to find something good to read. But I found one book that I did enjoy, and uh, it was where the red fern grows. I don't know if you, any of you've ever watched the movie, but <clears throat> but anyhow. Uh, living where I lived and hunting and fishing like I did, that movie just really set a good tone in my mind as to, you know, where I could really tap into what the writer was saying. And uh, I've watched the movie, but my imagination was just really more powerful than the movie. But I, I, uh, I did read through that book, and uh, it was really, really good read. I enjoyed reading every part of it and hated when it was over with. And I say all that to say this. I pray that if there's, a, there's a cultivation in our heart a hunger for God's Word. And as you pray, I want you, I want you I want to pray that way. God create a hunger in my life for your Word. I remember earlier on in my Christian life, you know, that uh, uh, you know there, that, that hunger came up in my life, that I wanted to read God's Word. And that's just strange in itself because I was a guy that was in such rebellion, running from God, going, going against the grain, uh, just following a, you know, a life of my own, doing what I wanted to do, and making, making enough problems and trouble as I went. But when the Lord radically saved me, he just created a hunger in my heart to be in the house of God and a hunger in my heart to read his word. And uh, even though I've been brought up in church, it was just so much you know, to look at and read. So again, I'm saying a lot, again, to say this, I pray that the Lord cultivates a hunger in your heart for God's word. It's so important. You know, once, once we get into this, and after 21 days, you know, that helps us to establish a good habit 
of reading God's Word. So get in there, hang with it. As the kids talk about, get you some streaks going with that, and that means you're just doing it every day. So anyhow, anyhow. Anyhow, so we're going to go be going to the book of Romans, a really powerful book. Just going to pull a couple of passages of Scripture out of there, talk on them just a little bit with you this evening, and I pray that they're a blessing to you as we just look at this uh, passage of Scripture. We're going to go to Romans 15 and 30, first of all. And uh, Romans 15 and 30. Let me get back to it with you this evening. And uh, if you're hanging in there with me, just give me the amen somewhere on the screen if you don't mind. Amen. Let me get down. Let me scroll down to my place I was at a moment ago. Now, Paul is making some closing remarks, making his way to the end of what he's going to write to the Roman church, and of course to us as well. And uh, he's, he's finishing up Romans, Romans 15, and it's a great passage of Scripture right there. And uh, I just love it. And uh, hello, Sister Natalie. I just keep kind of going back and forth. Glad you could be with us. We're praying for you. Uh, you know, we trust that everything's still still going good, good for you. And it says this. It says this. Uh, he says, I urge you, br brothers and sisters, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me, that I might be, might be kept safe from the unbelievers in Judea, uh, and that the uh, contribution I take to Jerusalem may be favorably received by the Lord's people there, so that I may come to you with joy by God's will, and in your company be refreshed. The God of peace be with you all. Amen. And uh, I just that just last passage, passage there, or, or verse number 32, just stood, stood out to me, says, says this, so that I may come to you with joy by God's will, and in your company be refreshed. That's one of the things, you know, I guess we miss you know, when it comes to church right now, is being able to have the, the company of each other uh, because there's so many people not able to attend. But anyhow, just looking at that, it is refreshing when we come together, even if it's like this. That's one of the thing, things that I love about, you know, getting together, even if it's online. It is refreshing. It is encouraging. It can be challenging. But anyhow, it's a blessing. But he says in verse number 30, I urge you, brothers and sisters, so he's reaching out to them and just really, really, you know, pulling them into his uh, his mindset. And if I can get back over here just a second with me, uh, and, it, and I'm reading this out of the Message Bible. He says, I have one request, re request, dear friends, pray for me. Pray strenuously with and for me to God the Father through the power of our Master Jesus through the love of the Spirit. That's powerful words right there. And I want to read that to you again out of the Message Bible. It says, this, I have one request, dear friends. It's all to the Roman church. Pray for me. Pray strenuously with me and for me to God the Father through the power of, of our Master Jesus, through the love of the Spirit. Wow. So uh, so he's, he's pulling his people in. And I thought about this because, you know, uh, you would think with us doing service like this online and you think with what we've got going on on Sunday morning that it would just be a breeze. But I'm going to tell you what, for, every, all, for everyone concerned and everyone that's trying to help put this thing on and keeping everything going, it is challenging. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a good struggle, but it's a struggle. And this is, you know, that's what Paul is saying right there. His pray for me and join with me in my struggles by praying to God for me. So what he's trying to get these, these this Roman church to do, he's trying to get them to buy into what's going on, trying to get them to buy into the to the call, trying to get them to buy into the message mission, trying to get them to 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 to, to buy into the worship. So he's pulling them in. He's, he's saying, "I need you, even though that we're removed." And he was removed from them, even though that we're removed. You know, we still need each other. We need to be praying for each other. We need to be lifting each other up because it's not just a struggle for, as a pastor. It's a struggle. It's a struggle for every pastor. And when I say that, I want you just to really think about some pastors and pray for them. Lift them up. These are difficult times for pastors. You know, you wouldn't think that, but it is. It's a very trying and very difficult time. So I encourage you to pray for me, and I encourage you to pray for other pastors as well who are doing our best to keep moving forward with the body of believers during this COVID-19 season. And so that's so important right there. Paul just starts that out or, or finishes up that book uh, with with this this request, this, this asking. And it says, uh, let me flip back over here to another version if you'll give me just a second and get back down here to it. And uh, thank you for kind of bearing with me just a little bit in this. And uh, uh, let me get over here. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, just one second. Thank you. Uh, okay. 
He says, uh, again, back to the NIV, it says, I urge your brothers and sisters by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, by the love of the Spirit, that's the love we have for the Spirit and the love of the Spirit inside of us, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Now, uh, join me in my struggle. You can use that word strive there as well. And that means to agonize together. It's it's almost like going. It's almost in the, in the mind. To, uh, this particular word that he's using right here, you can go back to the garden uh, there where Jesus was when the soldiers came in. Remember, Jesus was praying, and the Bible indicates to us that his sweat became as great drops of blood. He was in an agonizing time. He asked his disciples to join in with him, but you know, I don't know that he got a lot of help out of them during that time. That this is this is the same type of thing that Paul is doing. He's asking those folks, please join in with me in prayer, because we need to, we 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 are a, we are a, we we are you know we're about togetherness. It's not just Paul's ministry, you know. It's the ministry to the Romans. It's Christ's ministry working in that. So I uh, just wanted to kind of start off right there with that. And uh, as Paul begins to end like that, he begins to say, "Pray for pray for me." I leave that prayer. And again. It's, uh, it's buying in. So I want to go over now to chapter number 16. Thank you for taking a little time with me right there. And we're going to just start off in verse number 1. And it says this. Now he's, now he's just kind of breaking it down, kind of getting personal with it, kind of like we're doing right now. And I look at it and I just say hello to Sister uh, Sister Becky. And then you see Natalie up there and we said hello. And these are just personal greetings that, I, that I've given to you. And this is what Paul is doing. He's just giving them some personal greetings, very, very, very personal touch right here. And he says this in these greetings. He says, I commend to you, our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Centuria. It's pretty good way. I said it okay. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of, of his people, of God's people, and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been a benefactor of many people, including me. He's telling, he's beginning to relate to you that, that this person that he's sending or commending to them, this Phoebe, that uh, you know, he is uh, he's really lifting her up in front of those people and letting them know that she is very beneficial to him in the ministry. And you know, what Paul is doing is, is reflecting on the whole team as we begin to make our way through this a little bit. He says, Greet Aquila and Pris uh, Priscilla and Aquila, and he calls them my co workers in Christ Jesus. Look, look at what he's saying right there. Again, another personal greeting. He's bringing these folks to the forefront. He's mentioning their names and letting people know that these are co-workers in Christ. He said, couldn't get the job done without them. They're such a help. They're so valuable. He even goes on to say about them, they risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them because they're investing their lives. You see, that to me is what church is about. It's serving, and, and, and I know that during the times we're in, we may scratch our head and, and wonder how we can serve, but there are still things that this church does, our church does, my church, your church, you know, this Campton does. And so it's important that we all do our best to participate and keep it going and keep it moving. So again, uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers, what we're saying, he commended them, he, uh, he he greeted them, and he encouraged them. As you'll read down this list with me, and we'll take a moment or two to do that, you're going to find out there's probably just as many or more women that he's mentioning as it is men. And so we're thankful that both men and women are serving the Lord with this guy by the name of the Apostle Paul and being such a blessing to so many, so many people that they're touching. And he goes on goes on to say, let me just not get stuck right there, but let me keep moving. He said, greet also the church that meets at their house. Well, evidently, Priscilla and Aquila, you know, they had a the church that met in their home or a group of people that gathered there in their house, a little house church, I guess you could call that. And he goes on to say, and I may not get this name too good. Uh, he says, greet my dear friend Epinetus, who was a first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. So evidently, this person is still hanging in there, still going on, still going strong. And so being a convert, he reflects back on his salvation. And so thankful. You know, when you begin to think about the people in ministry that's got saved, it's so refreshing, it's so encouraging. Because when, you, when you're a team, it's, the, it's, it's the, the, the blessing that comes upon that team when they see someone give their life to Jesus. Now it goes on to say in verse number five, after that, greet my dear friend, uh, excuse me, number six, greet Mary who worked very hard for you. Greet Mary who worked very hard for you. Again, there's another lady in the church that was working very hard. And uh, then greet 
Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. We're saying they were saved before I was saved. And so they've been at my side, even in prison. Wow, and here's another, another tough name. Greet Ampliatus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear, dear friend Statius. Greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test, even through the, through the trying times. Who's, what he's saying right there, that this person was very faithful to Christ, even though they, they were tested very seriously. And he just keeps on going down through there, mentioning different ones. Verse number 12, uh, Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Ye, greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who's worked, worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. You know, and I could do the same thing as pastor here. I could just begin to reflect back to the team of people that we have that get the job done week in and week out. So isn't that, isn't that just wonderful? Isn't that just wonderful to know that uh, this is all about being a team this is about us all pulling together, working together, and allowing God to help us. These people, like I say, work together as a team. And a uh, little, little something that I pulled up, just a statement right here, it says this, Ministry is a hard road sometimes, but the friends you make on the way are amazing. Well, ministry is a hard hard road sometimes, but the friends you make on the, on the way are amazing. That's one of the wonderful things about serving together. One of the wonderful things about serving together is the friends you make, the bonds you establish, the things that you can accomplish, and from your accomplishments, the things that you can celebrate of how God has worked through you. So, uh, you know, I, I just want to encourage us all this evening to recognize, you know, uh, that I could I could go down a list of people myself and uh, just uh, recognize the team that we have, but there's quite a few of them, and uh, I'm very thankful. I'm, I'm just so thankful for the ones you know, even during the even even during the times we're in, when ministry is hard, work still goes on. I think about out there. I, I drive in a few moments ago, and uh, in from work, and uh, the signs were up out there talking about fruits and vegetables. You know that we have here at the church. People were pulling into the church. Got a little closer, and uh, I uh, saw uh, Brother Gary, and I saw saw Rachel out on the side of the road with signs up waving to people, giving their attention so they could be a part of that and, you know that, that's wonderful and the Welch family is always so good about keeping the church clean you know there's another one that stands out in my mind as well uh that works very hard sometimes just kind of in the back background that, and and uh that's sister Frances uh so thankful for the hard work that she puts in and uh COVID-19 has made her job more difficult uh, there's no doubt about that and uh, it's just uh, trying to, you know, we, we have to work between the online giving and then we have to work with the, the, other, the other ways that we receive offerings. So it is somewhat challenging there, but we're making our way step at a time. So our hats off to Sister Frances uh, for, the, for all the hard work that she puts in and the long hours that go on right there in, in her life. And uh, thank God for that. And uh, the young guy I see out here sometimes, well, quite regularly, who keeps our gr grass cut, that's uh, Colton Law. And he's just kind of a, you know, he's a sport out there. He gets on that lawnmower, he gets going and, and takes care of our grass. Thank the Lord for it. Thank God for our audio video team that works week in, week out, you know. And uh, for through, we've got a few folks in there in service. And sometimes we just, just been uh, me and them back during the shutdown times. And so just a blessing right there. Worship team does a, tr a phenomenal job. And I guess, and I, you know, I, I don't know how Paul did all this without getting in trouble because. There's just so many people that work hard. I think about, uh, you know, different ones that pitch in and help out and, uh, and and make it happen. They just make it happen. And I didn't mean to embarrass you if I called your name out this evening. I just happened to be thinking about the different people that keep things going and, and help out the way that they do. And, you know, the uh, the Boltons that work out there. I've, I've, uh, I've seen Austin on a number of occasions out there and then, and um, you know Benny, you know Benny Hudson out there helping out with it, getting the boxes of food into the cars of the people. And you know, uh, again, memory fails me, but there's just so many people that, that keep things going, making things happen. And you know, you know that's so important, church. That's so important. You know, I uh, just honestly, you know, we 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 want to say that things are going to get started back up here in a week or two weeks or three four weeks or whatever. But you know, we don't know when things would get back to, to what we would call a, a normal again, where we can open up the doors of the church and we can just find everybody to come in, you know, pack the house out, 
You know, when that time will come, I don't know. But until then, there's still the work of God to be done. Paul was in prison. The work of God continues to go on. Struggles, you know, the, the, the road of ministry is hard, but the friends that you make along the way, they're valuable and precious. And I've made some dear, Susan and I have made many dear friends on this road, and uh, a number of them right here at Campton. As people are being blessed and people are being strengthened and everybody working together, you know, and I agree with you, Sister Patsy. We have some, we have a great church family, and that's why I always like to put, uh, I love my church. Now, listen, folks, uh, we're going to close out. Went a longer than I thought it would, but anyhow, I hope that the word has been helpful to you tonight, recognizing that Paul thought, thought greatly of his people. I, I really think highly of you as our church family. And so, so, so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for being so faithful and, and being so generous uh, in your giving. That's just wonderful. And we want to encourage you to keep doing that. And, uh, you know, opportunities for ministry, you know, continue to go on. And uh, with that in mind, I, we just have to kind of work it to where it's just, uh, you know, a few people doing that. You know, so the social distancing can, can be a, a part of it. So anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. Uh, love you. God bless you. Hope you have a great rest of this week. We're going to close things out in prayer. You know, as we uh, so let's pray. Father, we love you. And uh, and God, I just can't say enough about the wonderful church family that we have. And Lord, I know that tonight, Lord, I'm sure I missed uh, just many, many names that have been mentioned of different people that have been that are that are so helpful week in and week out at our church. Uh, Lord, it's just a blessing, and we pray that we see more and more people, God involved in the work of the ministry that uh, that we recognize that we're the church of the living god lord that the gates of hell shall not prevail against our church or, or the church and uh, with that god in our heart and with that in our mind covid 19 is not going to prevail against any of us Lord, we're so thankful god that we have victory we have victory in you and we'll keep pressing on we'll keep pushing on we'll keep moving forward We'll keep, we'll, we'll, we pray for souls to be saved and lives to be changed. We pray that during this time of 21 days of fasting and prayer, that we all get closer to you in our relationship with you, that we set aside those things in our life that may hinder us or cause us to be distracted, and we focus primarily on you and our family. And uh, we just ask you in Jesus' name to, to, to bless us all and encourage us. Lift up the, 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 lift up those who work, work hard. Uh, lift, lift, strengthen their hands for the good work that they're in and we're all in and uh, we just believe in you for, for great things to happen and uh, Lord for people to be saved folks to be baptized we'll have to figure out a way to baptize but God there's got to be a way and Lord we love you for it in Jesus name we give you the praise for everything again meet all the needs we've, that we've mentioned and more and we thank you for that tonight amen and amen join us Sunday morning 10 o'clock uh, you know uh, we, I think last Sunday we had 22 people i think here with us we welcome to come be a part of our service we do practice social distancing our doors open at 9 45 we just kind of get you to come in in an orderly fashion where and then we try to seat you that way so that we can be sure that everybody kind of stays in a safe place when we conclude our service we dismiss you in an orderly fashion so that we can maintain some social distancing uh, and so uh, if you have health concerns or health conditions, we try to get you dismissed first so that, uh, you know, you won't have to walk by anybody or anything like that. So, again, God bless you. We love you. If you'd like to be a part of the service, come on out. Join in with us 10 o'clock on Sundays. And then, again, 6.30 is on Wednesday night. Again, I can't begin to tell you how refreshing it is to see your name pop up on the screen as you're part of our, part of our time together tonight. As I put in the, put in the uh, text to you, uh, we encourage you to do watch parties. If you say, what's a watch party? Look into it and see what it is. Uh, that's, I think that's just where you invite some friends to come be a part of it with you. Uh, like us on Facebook. Check in. Share this post. And, uh, and let it get around. Love you all. God bless you. See you Sunday.